Right, so uh, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about the mean square deviation, the root mean square deviation, variance and standard deviation. All of these are a measure of spread and we'll look at how these are um, derived and the various forms they can take. Right, we'll look at um, firstly two types of data. We'll look at raw data and we'll also look at data where there's a frequency distribution. And for each of these two types of data, we'll look at um, a definition which um, works well with tables and also a working definition which we can use with uh, pen and paper quite, quite easily. Right, so say we have a list of data over here and we put this in a table, we find the sum and we call that sum SX. And um, if we sum the x values divided by the number of items, which is 9, we get 5.9, and that's the mean of this data. Once we have the mean, which is 5.9, if we look at how far away each value is away from the mean, so if we do 6.5 take away 5.9, we get 0 0.6, and uh, on top of here, there should actually be a hat. So we've get so it's a, so it's x take away x bar which is the mean, and uh, similarly so forth. If we go down all the way, our data set um, and look at the um, deviation of each uh, data value away from the mean, we get this column here. <coughs> well, this column by itself isn't much use to us because we've got positive and negatives inside it. So we'll end up what we'll end up doing is squaring each of these terms to generate a further set of values over here and we can then sum them and this sum is called uh, the SXX the, or the sum of the squares and uh, so here we've got a minus sign and it's the sum of x take away x bar all squared so this SXX is quite an important um, uh, this is quite important when we're doing calculations for measures of spread We'll be using this to work out the um, root mean square deviation, mean square deviation, standard deviation, and variance. So once we've got SXX, we we simply um, divide it by n, which is the number of terms, and here we've got nine, and that gives us the mean squared deviation. Right, once we've got the mean square deviation, um, to, to find the root mean, RMSD, we simply take the mean square deviation and square root it, and that gives us the root mean squared deviation. So, just to recap, what we've done is taken x uh, away from the mean for each item, squared it, that gives us SXX, divided by n, it gives us the mean squared deviation and uh, square root that, and that gives us the root mean squared deviation. For statistical reasons, the SXX, the sum of the squares, if we divide it by n minus 1, it gives us the variance, as opposed to n, which gave, the, which gave us the mean squared deviation. So if you divide by n minus 1, it gives us the variance, and that gives us 0 0.095. If we then go ahead and square root the variance, we get the standard deviation. So SXX divided by n minus 1 square root gives us the standard deviation. So let me just correct that for minus sign. What's your minus sign in there as well? Now, in an exam, you might not be wanting to control all those columns. So there is an easier way, and we'll call this method B. And uh, this problem is more appropriate to work with if you've got pen, paper, and a calculator. So here we've got, we'll do the same calculations again. So we'll work out the mean firstly. So you sum of the uh, x divided by the number of items. You've got uh, 9, and that gives us 5.9. What we'll then do is square each of these items and generate a further column. We'll simply square these items um, as we go down. In your calculators, you should be able to enter these values and uh, work out the appropriate um, corresponding um, 
uh, standard deviation, variance, and mean. Right, once we've got um, the squares, we then um, the, the sum of the squares is simply um, x squared, the sum of x squared, take away n, okay, times by x bar squared. So here we've got sum of x squared is 314.05, take away 9 times our um, 5.92, which was our um, 5.9 was our mean, and so we square that um, and times it by n. So our SXX is therefore 0 0.76. Right, once we have that, once we have SXX, we simply divide it by n as we did before and it gives us the mean squared deviation and that gives us 0 0.0844. If we divide it by n minus 1, we will get the standard deviation. So uh, SXX over n square root gives us the root mean squared deviation which is uh, 0 0.291 right so dividing it by n if we divide it by n minus 1 it gives us the variance and then if we square root that we get um, the standard deviation so here we'll square root the sx's of n minus 1 and it gives us the standard deviation we can put our value to three significant figures. One of the things I suggest we do is round off at the end um, as much as you possibly can rather than doing calculations. Right, so say we've got some data where you've got x against f. Here's our x values, here's our f values, and we can put the totals here at the bottom. x times f gives us this column over here. And if we were to uh, look at the difference between x and our mean, uh, which is the mean is simply calculated as being, uh, let me put this down, as the sum of fx divided by the sum of f. So that gives us the mean. If we then take our x value and um, subtract it from the mean, which is 2.1, we get minus 2.1 for the first one minus 1.1 so forth all the way down if again since we have some negative values if we were to square each of these items it becomes more useful and meaningful we can then multiply that square by the frequency so 4.41 times 9 should give us 39.61 so forth and sum them to give us the sum of um, the uh, sum of the squares SXX. Now once we have SXX we simply divide it by n and that gives us the mean squared deviation and uh, if we then take the square root of this it gives us the root mean squared deviation. So here we've taken the square root of uh, SXX and it's given us the root mean squared deviation. If we take SXX and divide it by n minus 1, it gives us the variance. And then if we square root the variance as follows, it gives us the standard deviation. So this was done using method A. Let's look at another method method B. Right, so the first thing we'll do is um, sum right, so what we'll do is this S means the sum, so you've got the sum of F is the total number of terms, so you've got 100 and that gives us N um, and we've got the sum of Fx, so you've got F, you've got X work out F times X, sum them together and so this can effectively be written as the sum of fx divided by the sum of f gives us the mean for frequency distribution. 
once we've got the mean we'll then take our x values um, square them and multiply them by f so for example 2 squared is 4 4 times 35 gives us 140 so we do what we're doing here is um, x squared times f now once we've worked out the x squared times f okay, um, and you add them together you get 610 and we can subtract that from n which is obviously the total number of terms times by our mean squared which is 2.1 so we do 2.1 squared um, times by n and subtract it from the sum of x squared times f and that gives us 169 so now we've got SXX and, we, and then we can simply divide by n to get the mean square deviation and also take the square root of the mean square deviation to get the root mean square deviation by n minus 1 to get the variance and then to take the square root of the to get the standard deviation Right, so if we summarize what we've um, just covered so far, firstly there's two types of data, they've got raw and frequency and we want to work out SXX, the sum of the squares and for the raw data if you take X away from its mean and square it and then sum it all together it gives us XXX and the way to do it is take each term, square it, find the sum of it and take that away from N times the mean squared. The mean is obviously just sum of all the terms divided by the number of items. For frequency distribution, um, again you can take each item away from the mean, square it, times f and find the sum, or take each term, times it by f, sum it, and then take that away from n times the mean squared. Once we've got SXX, um, we can, so if we do SXX divided by n, this gives us the uh, mean squared deviation and if we do SXX over n square root it gives us the root mean squared deviation now if we do SXX over n minus 1 this gives us the variance and the square root of the variance SXX over n minus 1 square root gives us the standard deviation and all of these measures spread for statistical reasons we divide it by n minus 1 for the variance and n minus 1 over here over here with the standard deviation some books do it differently so be careful if you are using other resources. Right, that's it for measures of spread. I hope you found that useful. You might want to have a go at a few exercises now.